Hello everyone, welcome to Think Computer YouTube channel. In this video, I will explain about single dimensional arrays in Java. So what's in this video? We will be discussing the definition of array, types of array, declaration of array, memory allocation of array, indexing in array, inputting values in array, need of array and initialization of array. In this video, I am going to only discuss the concepts which are related to array. In my next video, which will be the part 2 video, in that one, I will be explaining programs. So let's start with the definition of array. The definition says, an array is a collection of similar type of data which is stored in continuous memory locations and it is a non-primitive data type. So before I explain the first line, let me talk about the data type. Well, in Java, there are two types of data, primitive and non-primitive. Primitive means predefined data type, means the type of data which is already present in the Java language, in the Java system, and we can use it in the program. For example, int, float, char, long, double, boolean, even string also. Whereas the non-primitive data types, these are the ones which are derived or created using the primitive data types. Okay, So they are dependent on the primitive data type. Now going back to the definition, an array is a collection. The meaning is it has one or more elements together. So it's a collection. Okay, So as you can see this example which I am showing, this is a typical array. So see how it looks. There are multiple boxes. Each box can store one value. So right now here we have got seven boxes. So we can say that this array, this array A can store seven values. So array is a collection because it can store one or more values. Okay. Collection of similar type meaning is that all of the data which are stored in the array belong to a same data type. That means if you are going to create array of integer, then all of the data will be integer. If you are going to create array of double means real number, then all of them will be real numbers. If you are going to create array of characters, then all of them will be characters. So this is important thing to remember. You cannot have any array with different type of data altogether, not possible. So array is a collection of similar type of data which is stored in continuous memory location. This is the last thing that is continuous memory location. That means when you create any array, all of the elements are stored together in one place in the memory. So that is the definition of array. Next is type of array. So there are two types of array, single dimensional array, also known as 1D array and double dimensional array, also known as 2D array. Well, the explanation of double dimensional array I have already given in a different video. So you can go to my channel, hit the standard 10 playlist and there you will get this video double dimensional array. In this video, I am only going to discuss about the single dimensional array, which is also known as 1D array. So a difference is in front of you only. I have uh, given two examples here. The first is the single dimensional array and the second is the double dimensional array. So you can see and understand what is the difference. In single dimensional array, there is always a single row. And in the double dimensional array, there are multiple rows and multiple columns. Okay. So for example, in this uh, structure, we have three rows and we have three columns. Whereas in the single dimensional array, there is only single row. Okay. So that is the difference if you compare it side by side. Now let's talk about the declaration of array. You need to write only two things. First is the data type and second is the array name. This bracket you see, this is the sign of array. If you don't give this bracket, then it will be a normal variable. It will not be an array. If you need to declare an array, then the bracket is compulsory. These are some examples. I have declared different type of arrays. The first one is integer array. Second one is float array. Third one is double. 
फोर्थ वन इज स्ट्रिंग आ रे देन वी हैव कैरेक्टर आ रे देन वी हैव बुलेन आ रे वट आई वॉन्ट टू से हियर इज दैट यू सी ऑल टाइप ऑफ आर एज वेदर इट इज इंटीजर और फ्लोट और डबल और स्ट्रिंग और कैर और बुलियन द वे वी डिक्लेयर इट इट्स सेम नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट मेमरी एलोकेशन ऑफ आर ए यू शुड नो दैट जस्ट बाई डिक्लेयरिंग द आर ए इट विल नॉट ऑक्यूपाई एनी मेमरी ओके सो इफ यू नीड टू एक्चुअली क्रिएट द आर ए इन द मेमरी यू नीड टू एलोकेट मेमरी ओके एंड फॉर मेमरी एलोकेशन न्यू ऑपरेटर इज यूज I know you are already familiar with the new operator. If you are a Java programmer, you must have used the new operator in many places. At least while you are taking input, either using the buffered reader method or using the scanner method, you have written the keyword new. Yes, it's a keyword. So it is also used when we are uh, allocating memory for any array, whether it is one D array or two D array. So this is the syntax. Data type array name bracket equal to new data type and size. Now, if you look carefully, the left hand side this part is the declaration part only, which I have explained in my previous slide. Okay, right now. So this left hand side is the declaration, and the right hand side part is called the memory allocation. So when I just write int a bracket, the computer understands that I am creating an array, but the computer is not knowing that what will be the size of array. as soon as i write the right hand side this part new in 10 then the computer gets to know i mean the compiler gets to know that it will have 10 values means the size of array will be 10 so this kind of a structure will be created in the memory so as you can see a10 means the name of array is a and the size of array is 10 so there will be total 10 boxes in the memory like this and as the definition says it's a collection of similar type of data so all of these boxes can only contain integer and all of them are stored in the continuous memory blocks means back to back in one place in the memory okay next thing is example so i do have memory allocation examples for different type of data for float this is the one for double for long for character for string for boolean so this is the way we do it the syntax is followed strictly data type array name equal to new data type and size of array you can give any size in case you if you do not know the size of array you can also use a variable like i have written n so the value of n i can take input and then i can directly put it there in the array and that size will be used for the array okay now uh, there is one more alternate method to do the memory allocation if you don't want to do it this way you can also do it this way what is the difference if i want to declare and allocate memory in the same line i will write like this float b equal to new float 20 so left hand side is the uh, array declaration and right hand side is the memory allocation both of the things done in the same line but it can be done like this float b bracket semicolon and then in a next statement b equal to new float 20 so in this way i can declare the array separately and i can allocate the memory separately it's possible but there is a thing which you have to be very careful about and that is see when we are declaring and allocating the memory separately in the second place means when we are allocating memory there is no sign of array the bracket is not there so that is something you need to remember if you are declaring the array and allocating the memory in the same place in the same line i meant to say then it's okay you have to use bracket in both the places in the place of declaration as well as the memory allocation but if you are doing it separately in two different statements means you are declaring the array separately and you are allocating the memory separately then you have to be careful in the second place where you are allocating memory no bracket is there and you cannot use a bracket there okay it is part of the syntax only same with any kind of array whether it is float double long char string or boolean anything okay so all of these are in front of you you can see the examples okay next is about indexing in array so as i told the values are stored in continuous memory blocks so many values are there right so many boxes then how the computer will understand that in which box we want to store the value or which box we are trying to access okay which position we are trying to access well it's done using the index or subscript so when you create any array let's say i create this array int a equal to new int 5 so i create this integer array of size 5 so computer will create indexes okay and indexes are always beginning with zero 
for any type of array integer array or float array or string double or any type of array i mean uh, single dimensional or double dimensional for any type of array the index always begins with 0 and it goes up to n minus 1 so let's say if the size of array is 5 then the indexes will be 0 1 2 3 4 i hope you are understanding what i'm trying to say if the size of array is 10 then indexes will be 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so 0 to n minus 1 where n is the size of array now how we assign values in the array using the equal to we can directly assign suppose if you want to store 10 in the first position in the first box we can write a of 0 equal to 10 so 10 will go to the first box then if we want to store uh, 25 in the second box in the second place so we can write a of 1 equal to 25 same way we can store values in the remaining boxes like this a of 2 equal to 100 a of 3 equal to 200 a of 4 equal to minus 80 okay but instead of writing all these assignments uh, separately we prefer using a loop so this way we can input okay if we are trying to input values in any array so just give a message like i have written enter five numbers and then run a loop mostly we use the for loop but you can use a while or do while loop also when you are taking input in any array or when you are accessing the array so using the loop remember always start with zero under normal conditions always starts with zero why because index begins with zero so you are basically going to use this variable in the position of the index so what i have written is a of i equal to sc dot next int now you know what is sc dot next int for taking input integer now the loop will run from 0 to less than 5 since i am beginning with 0 i will not go up to 5 but i will go less than 5 means up to less than equal to 4 okay up to 4 we will go so we are beginning with 0 first input will go to a of 0 because i have used i as a variable in the place of index okay so first input will go to a of 0 then the loop will repeat and i will become 1 1 is less than 5 the next input will go to a of 1 means in the next box second box then i plus plus i will be 2 the next value will go to a of 2 then i will be 3 next value will go to a of 3 and this way we take input values in the array now let's talk about what is the need of array why can we do all these things using normal variable well i have three solid points first using array we can store a large number of data items in the memory efficiently now how efficiently that you saw in the previous slide when i was explaining how we take input using loop so if the size of array increases let's say the size of array is 100 or 1000 or 10000 then also the same loop can be used i wrote i equal to 0 i less than 5 i plus plus in that case i can write i equal to 0 i less than 1000 and i plus plus so for me the code will not increase that is my second point also the second point says accessing array elements requires less amount of code so you do not have to write a lot now just imagine if there is no array there is no concept of array and you are just using simple variable normal variables okay let's say integers what if you if you need a hundred variable what you will do you will declare hundred variables int a b c d x y z how many variables will be there and how you will take input 100 times not possible no so that is the reason why arrays are used okay when you are using array you can declare it in one place just give the size of array according to your need use a loop take input okay so for a programmer you have to write less amount of code okay and the last point is array elements are stored in continuous memory location so for computer it's faster to access an array compared to normal variable well how that is going to happen i'm going to explain this point in the next slide see i have two diagrams in this example okay i'm going to explain how array will be fast so let's say these are uh, memory blocks means these are the computer memories and let's say all the red boxes are the ones which already have any data suppose suppose the red boxes do have the data already present okay some other data or maybe data of program so the other boxes means uh, the ones which are not red they are vacant so we can store something in those boxes okay now let's say we want to store four values 50 100 150 and 200 if we take normal variable let's say we take four integer variable 
A is equal to 50, B is equal to 100, C is equal to 150 and D is equal to 200. So in that way, how it will be stored? 50 will go to this box, let's say. 100 will go to this box, 150 will be going to this box and 200 in this box. So wherever it will get place, wherever it will get uh, free memory to store one variable, it can put that variable in that place. Okay, so it's not necessary that all of them will be stored back to back or in continuous memory location. They can be stored anywhere, wherever the space is present for one variable, any one of them will go to that place. Okay, so in this way, in the memory, all of these values will be scattered. Okay, I hope you're understanding. But if we create an array like this, int a equal to 50, 100, 150 and 200. So if we take an array and we take four values in that array, so wherever in the memory, there is sufficient place to store four variables back to back, there only the values will be stored. So the values will not be stored in these boxes or in this box or in this box or in these two boxes. But in fact, it will go to that place where it can store all four of them together. So when they are stored back to back in continuous memory location, they can be accessed faster. It's a obvious thing. Yes. So that is the benefit of using array. It is faster to access. Okay. Initialization of array. So this is the last topic that we'll discuss in this video. I hope you already know about initialization. Well, initialization means to give value to a variable at the time of declaring the variable. So when we declare any variable, any type of variable, and we give a value to the variable, that's called initialization. For an example, if I write int x equal to 100, so I can say x is integer and it is given a value 100. Okay. Same way we can initialize arrays also. So in front of you, you can see different type of arrays and the way they are initialized. Let's say integer array, int a equal to 5, 10, 15, 20. So this array a got four values, 5, 10, 15, 20. Automatically, the size of this array will become four. So that means when you are initializing any array, you don't have to allocate memory separately. You can directly give the values and the size of array will be equal to the number of values that you give. In the second case, let's say this one, double B equal to 2.5 comma 0.05 comma 9.98. So this double array has been given three values. So automatically the size of this array will become three. It will contain three real numbers. With character arrays, it's same, but the characters are enclosed in single quotes. So suppose I want to initialize this character array with the uh, letter here I and D I A India. So this way it will be stored. Okay. Each box will contain one of the characters and each one of them will be enclosed in single quotes. When it is a string, the only difference is that they are enclosed in double quotes. So welcome the first word enclosed in double quote to the second word enclosed in double quote, then think computer, the third word enclosed in double quotes and comma separated. Okay. When it is Boolean array, then we can only store true and false because Boolean value means true and false. So this way you can store the Boolean values, comma separated, no single quote, no double quote. Okay. In my next video, which is the part two of this video, I will only explain programs. Okay. Using single dimensional arrays. That's all for this video. Please do like, share and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos.